Hi everyone, I'm Saskia from Sask Makes. I'm in the process of learning how to knit and sew a slower and more sustainable wardrobe. Thought it would be fun to document that process here on YouTube. If you're interested, you can also find me on Instagram at Sask Makes. I uh, really got into sewing and knitting and crafting because I really enjoyed watching the sort of year in review style videos on YouTube. Um, I was absolutely amazed <laughs> by how much clothing people were able to make. And so I'm really excited to try filming one of those for the first time myself. 2023 was my first year, you know, really working on building out a handmade wardrobe. Um, it was also my first year that I knit any completed garments for myself. So I am really excited to share what I made. Uh, today I'm wearing my last finished object from 2023, which is my Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. I'm gonna go roughly chronologically through this video, so I'll loop back to the sweater right at the very end, but I will include timestamps down below with um, the different patterns that I made so that you can jump around and this will be both knitting and sewing content so if you're only interested in knitting or sewing feel free to jump around throughout the video all right so i definitely um am motivated to make clothing <laughs> when i have specific deadlines so you'll notice that i kind of had two big pushes of making this year the one was for a trip to palm beach with my sister earlier in the year and the second big push was for a trip that my husband and i just took um, so the first pieces that I made, um, oh, and I guess I'll mention, I am going to try and be pretty efficient and pretty quick with how I talk through things. So I probably won't really comment on sizing or fabric choices, but if it's helpful, my measurements are a 39 inch bust, 35 inch waist and a 48 inch hip. So definitely kind of a big difference between my bust and waist measurements and my hip measurements. I'm also 5'10", so I'm fairly tall. I generally made the size in all of these patterns that was intended for my measurements. So you can use that as a rough guideline to know which sizes I made, but if you have any specific questions, I would love to answer those in the comments. So please feel free to drop those below. So the first thing that I made was a Kind of matching set out of some really pretty green linen from Blackbird Fabrics. So I made two shirts and a skirt that I can all wear together interchangeably. The first shirt that I made is the Demeter Top by Anna Ellen Clothing. I really like this shirt. I do think that the fit when I wear it is... It's quite fitted around the armholes, but... So every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. And then... As I wear it throughout the day, I always really like how it looks. I like how it fits. Um, I think it's just one of those things where I think it fits a little bit more tailored than a lot of the ready-to-wear clothing that I have bought in the past. So it's just a matter of getting used to that fit. Um, I got a ton of wear out of this shirt. It's definitely something that I wear with the matching skirt as well, um, as well as just throwing it on with some jeans and wearing it to work. So I would say this pattern was definitely a success and I'll hopefully make more of these in the future. The next shirt that I made is the um, Ogden Cami by True Bias. I did the square neck hack, which they have a tutorial for on their website. I am overall fairly happy with this shirt. I didn't wear this one quite as much. And the reason for that is that there's just something that I think I need to fix on it. So when I wear this, it cuts quite low under the arms. So I feel a little bit exposed. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the straps and add in little sliders, not even to make the straps adjustable, but just to avoid having to rip out the whole strap. And I think that will let me shorten the straps on this shirt. And I believe if I can just shorten the straps by about an inch, the fit on this one will be a lot better. Um, I think this one is fine when I'm standing and it's hanging, but as soon as I start moving around, um, it just feels a little bit too open. So the other thing that I don't know if I love about this pattern is I do think the way that the facing on the inside works to me is just a little bit odd. Um, I looked at a ton of pictures online of people that had made this shirt 
there's definitely instances where you can just see where the facing on the inside stops. Um, so I don't really have an issue with that because I made this in, you know, a very um, opaque linen. But the construction of this one is just a little bit odd and it's not something that I intend to make again. However, um, I do think I'll get a lot of wear out of it once I fix the straps. The other thing that I don't love about this pattern is the fact that the way the pattern sizing works is you purchase the pattern in two size blocks. So I think there's um, maybe a size 0 to 20 block and then a 14 to 30 block. I, A, just don't really love having to <laughs> buy um, two of a pattern in case I want to make something for my sister or someone who's a different size than me. And I also um, kind of fall right in that mid-size range, so I tend to fall between sizes 14 and 22 depending on what I'm making and it's it's just a little tricky for me to decide what size to make when patterns are sold in those sort of separate blocks um, but this is the Octane Cami I do really like the fabric that I use I think this linen is really beautiful and I am hopefully gonna buy more of it this year at some point and make a few more little you know interchangeable sets like this so to wear with these two shirts, I made the Peppermint Pocket Skirt um, from Peppermint Patterns. I think this used to be a free pattern, but I want to say that now it's a pay-what-you-can pattern. I think when I downloaded it, I just had to sign up for their newsletter, but I'm not quite sure. Um, but I do think the pricing on their patterns is pretty accessible. Um, and I think this might be the Me Made item that I've worn the most this year. Um, so this is the skirt, um, it's just kind of a simple skirt with two side panels and then elasticated waist. Uh, you'll notice that this is called the <laughs> peppermint pocket skirt, but my version does not have any pockets. I actually really do like how the pockets look on the pattern, but I made a wearable twill of this one and the pockets just felt... A little bit ridiculous um so I still want to remake this at some point and make a version that has the pockets but for the look I was going for on this trip it just wasn't quite what I wanted so uh, I just adjusted the pattern pieces so that it eliminated the pocket and that also meant that this was a really quick really easy sew I did French seams on the inside and this was also my first time adding elastic to anything. So really fun sew and this is something that I either wear with matching tops or I wear it just with a white t-shirt to work. Um, in the spring and summer I probably wore this once a week. So I uh, really love this pattern, got a ton of wear out of it and uh, I really do like how all of these pieces look together. So uh, those are the first three pieces that I made for our trip to Florida. The next thing that I made was the uh, Hallen dress by Paradise Patterns. Um, I made this in a black sandwashed cooper from Core Fabrics. Um, I wanted something that was silk-like, but I was a little bit wary of sewing with silk. Um, the cooper was fairly expensive at the time, but I think it made for a really nice dress, and it's one that I have also gotten a lot of wear out of. Um, so the Helen dress is a pretty simple kind of bias bound dress and then it has a pretty low scoop back. This one has two views, um, one of which has a ruffle at the bottom and a gathered back and this is view B so it does not have the gathered back and there's no ruffle. Um, I mentioned this before on my channel but I really love the pattern instructions from Paradise Patterns. They're very clear, they're very beginner friendly. This pattern included instructions on how to finish the side slits with French seams, uh, which I really appreciated and followed to the letter. And then I did follow the Bella's built-in bra hack that was made for this pattern. I can link the tutorial to that below in the comments. And that basically just makes it a little bit easier for this dress to be worn without undergarments. Um, I'm not quite sure if you can see, but I just used a jersey fabric from Core Fabrics. And you basically just match the pattern pieces for the dress itself and then baste this um, jersey in on the edges and then you bind it together as one. I 
do you think that this helps make the dress a little bit more wearable? You're also supposed to add elastic in at the bottom, but I didn't do that and it is fine and it just didn't really seem necessary. Um, so I really enjoy wearing this dress. It's a nice special occasion dress and I think that I might try to make a shorter one for myself later this year because I have now seen quite a few pictures on Instagram where people wear shorter versions of this dress and I think it looks really nice. So that's the Helen dress by Paradise Patterns. The last piece that I made for our trip is not a very refined piece and it's not very neatly sewn, but I took the Demeter top pattern by Anna Ellen and basically just lengthened it into a simple shift dress. So this is made with a black double gauze fabric from Joanne Fabrics. And I just wanted an easy breezy dress to wear when we were walking around in Florida to throw on over a swimsuit, um, you know, just something to, to lounge in. I, so I took the pattern piece for my size for the sleeveless top, which I think is view D. And then I just lengthened it with a slight A-line shape. Um, and I used the amount of ease that I wanted around my hips to kind of guide me on how much to slope it out. I think I did my hip measurement plus 10 inches for the amount of ease. I also got a ton of wear out of this dress. Um, this is definitely my wear around the house dress in the spring and summer. Uh, as I mentioned, it's not very neatly sewn. The double gauze was a little bit tricky for me to work with. And I think especially the double gauze from Joann's is just woven so loosely that it's hard to, um, just kind of hard to manage. So I do want to retry this with a higher quality double gauze to see how that turns out. I followed the instructions from the Howland dress to do French seams and little side slits on the bottom. And yeah, this was a really cute, easy sew. I don't think this dress is going to last forever. Um, but once I wear it through, I'll probably make another one for myself. So... That's everything that I made for our trip to Palm Beach. It was really fun wearing clothing that I made myself uh, on vacation. That was kind of my first experience with that. And I'm really happy with the pieces that I made because I do feel like I got a lot of wear out of them um, for the rest of the summer and even into the fall. And the only exception to that is the Ogden cami. And it's honestly just because there's a fix I need to make to shorten the straps that I just have not had the energy for yet. So, um, so yeah, good summer sewing. I am excited to kind of delve into more dresses and skirts and things in the coming year. I did post a video a while ago with my sewing plans based on the fabric that's in my stash. Uh, and there are some dresses and skirts in there that I'm excited to make this year. If you're interested in checking out that video, I'll drop a link up here. Uh, so after this, I took a little bit of a hiatus from sewing to finish up some quilts that I was making. I did finish my first sweater in May. Um, so this is the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit. This is made with Pasquale Balayage and Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And it's just a really um, kind of boring uh, stockinette drop shoulder. It does have this nice thick collar, which I, um, I do really like. I think it looks nice. Um, it's got pretty long ribbing because the yarn is a mixture of, I think, alpaca and wool and mohair. It does have a lot of drape. Um, I didn't really get to wear this after I made it in May because it was already just way too hot in North Carolina. But as soon as it cooled off in the fall, I have worn this all the time. Uh, I, once again, probably wear this about once a week to work. And I also took this on our trip to, uh, to Europe and got a lot of wear out of it there as well. So, uh, yeah, and I made this in the size five, which is the size that corresponds with my uh, bust measurement. I'm having a beer to drink. Hopefully that is acceptable for YouTube. <laughs> um, felt like a beer kind of afternoon instead of a cup of tea. 
Up next is the saltwater slip dress from Friday Pattern Company. This is a slip dress that's not cut on the bias, which is something that really appealed to me because I don't always love things that are cut on the bias because they use up a lot of fabric. Um, the straps and everything are still cut on the bias, so I do still feel like the fabric consumption for this pattern was quite high. I made this in a viscose crepe from Blackbird Fabrics, and it was a little tricky to work with for my experience level, but it made for a really nice, kind of easy breezy dress. This one has waist ties and side slits, and it hits about mid-calf. I wore this quite a bit in the summer after I finished it, and then in the fall I wore this over a pretty fitted white t-shirt. Um, so a lot of wear out of this pattern as well. I was a little concerned because the fabric is so delicate, so I was worried I was just going to like rip through the seams, but it's held up beautifully. It's been washed quite a few times now. Uh, the pattern instructions were great and uh, this is something else that I will probably make again this summer in a shorter length. I think a black version of this dress uh, will be really handy to wear in the summer and also in the fall over t-shirts or maybe even over like a little tur turtleneck. So that's the Saltwater Slip by Friday Pattern Company. The next dress that I made is the Azure dress from Closet Core. This is part of their crew um, pattern subscription. I don't pay for the full subscription, but I have bought a few patterns, uh, just as standalone patterns for $10. And yeah, uh, this is a full maxi dress with these sort of asymmetrical gathers going down it. I do still need to sew a, bat a button to the back here. Um, this was a really fun sew. I have not had a chance to wear it because I finished this in maybe October, I can't quite remember when, but it just hasn't been warm enough and I have not really had any special occasions to warrant wearing this anyways. But this fabric was an absolute dream to work with. I think it is really stunning. I also have enough to make this dress in the same fabric but in black and white. Um, I'm still deciding if this pattern is what I actually want to do with that fabric or not. This dress is quite special to me because I feel like I used slightly more advanced sewing techniques for this dress. So to make this, I um, used the burrito method to add a full lining on the inside. And uh, I'm proud of how this sort of back slit with the little button turned out. And yeah, I think it's a really pretty dress. I will hopefully be able to get a lot of wear out of this in the summer. I do tend to get a lot of wear out of dresses like this that I can just throw on and I'm not someone who minds wearing the same clothing to you know multiple weddings or uh, anything like that. So I think this is one that will probably stay in my closet for a long time and get a lot of wear over the years. Um, I think the next thing that I finished was this hat, uh, which I won't spend a ton of time talking about because I have talked about this pattern quite a few times in some of my previous videos, but this is the Beanie by ZZ Textiles. It's a double folded stockinette hat, uh, and the decreases are meant to mimic a sewn beanie. I think this is a really great pattern. It was free when I downloaded it, but it now costs $4, which I think is still a great price. Uh, I know hats like this, if you're an experienced knitter, pretty easy to make without a pattern, but I am not there yet. So love this pattern. Um, this is the second one of these that I've made and I probably will make more in the future. So, um, and then I made this in Pasquale Balayage and Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And this one gets made gets made by holding two strands of mohair with one strand of fingering weight yarn. So this was a pretty expensive <laughs> make, but I wore this every single day on our trip in Europe because it was a little chilly there because it was December. So I think this is a great pattern and I have worn this a lot as well. Up next is another pattern from Paradise Patterns. This is the Samar Camisole. 
Um, this is made in a swimwear slash athletic fabric from Salt Lake Society. And I did talk about this one in my last sewing video that I posted, which I will link up here. Uh, this is a great pattern. It has a built-in shelf bra. And yeah, I think the construction is um, very neat. I'm quite proud of how my seam allow or not my seam, like my seams and top stitching and everything turned out. I made the full length instead of the crop length and I have enough fabric to make at least one more of these. I had made this to wear for a pickleball tournament, which I did and it worked great and this is something that I just wear around the house a lot as well. So that is the Samara Camisole from Paradise Patterns. The next thing that I made is also more of an athleisure wear type item. This is the Ren Fleece from Daughter Judy. And for this, I used a sweatshirt, fleece, and matching ribbing from Lyrical Fabrics. I am, so I need to buy more serger thread. So for some reason, when I bought my serger, I bought two spools of white thread and two spools of black thread. And so the, the inside finishing of all of my garments where I do use my serger does not look great. So that's what this white seam is back here. Um, but I am really proud of the neckline. Love how the sleeves turned out with this box pleat. I talked about this in my last video as well, but I struggled a little bit with the hem on this. I think I forgot to change the um, pressure foot pressure on my serger, so the seam just got pretty stretched out. And the pattern also didn't really provide any instructions on how to hem. So the only thing that I don't love about this is just the hem, and I think for my height, I also probably should have lengthened the pattern by a couple inches, but despite all of that, I also wear this sweatshirt all the time. I've worn it to work a few times, and I wear it around the house probably daily. So another great wear. It's something that I think I might, you know, make for my sister as a gift at some point as well if she's interested. This one is super, super oversized. Um, so I really like oversized patterns and I still think this is oversized. So if you don't like that fit, um, A, maybe this isn't the pattern for you or B, just make sure you size down. Um, so yeah. That is the Ren Fleece. I don't think I mentioned this, but this is by Daughter Judy Patterns. Um, so really good pattern instructions, except for the hem. And I did also think that this pattern was a little bit expensive considering that it only has one view, but I know that Daughter Judy Patterns also donates a portion of their proceeds and they do a tiered pricing structure. So you kind of pay what you can. Um, so that's the Ren Fleece. The next thing that I made is the Moonset Tee by Ozetta. This is a knitting project. Um, so it's a v-neck short sleeve tee and I knit this in um, Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, so it's 100% silk and I used the color cream so I did exactly what the sample photo looked like for this pattern. I really like Ozetta patterns. The instructions are good. Um, her clothing is, her patterns are very simple, but they're very easy to wear. I have, I wore, wore this for the first time this week, actually. I've been a little bit precious with it because it is white and it's silk and I wasn't really sure how easy it would be to wash. I was also a little bit worried that the sleeves would roll a lot and they would just be really fussy and I would be fiddling with it all day, but it wore really nicely for work, so I think it's something that I will kind of work into the rotation more often. I still think just because this is white and silk, I probably won't wear this to work on a weekly basis, but I think this will be really fun for, um, you know, grabbing coffee or going out for drinks or anything like that. Um, I talked about this pattern in one of my knitting videos, so won't spend a ton of time on it, but I thought this was a really enjoyable, really pleasant knit. And now that I'm more confident that it's something that I am going to get a lot of wear out of, I think I will try and find time to make another one for myself at some point this year. 
So the last two sewing projects that I had were two pairs of pants. So the one pair is the Lane Pants by uh, Sydney Graham. I think this was her first pattern that she released. So it's a pair of elasticated waist pants with cargo pockets um, and a really nice deep hem. So yeah, I love these pants. Um, I these, This is my first time making pants. I think this was a really nice pattern to start out on. I think because she is a newer designer, she put a lot of effort into making the pattern instructions really clear and really easy to follow. Uh, this was my first time doing a drawstring, first time doing buttonholes for the drawstring. Um, this one has slant pockets and it also has these nice cargo pockets. Something that I really appreciate about this pattern that may not be applicable to everyone, but I did not have to grade this at all, which once again, if you think about my waist to hip ratio is a little surprising. Um, but I made a straight size 16, really happy with the fit. It has just the right amount of ease. And this is another pattern that I wear all the time. I took this on our trip and wore it a few times, but it was raining. So I was having some issues with the bottom hem kind of soaking up all the water on the days that it was raining, but great pattern, great instructions, really comfy fit. And I do want to make some pajama pants for myself because I don't think I've ever been able to buy pajama pants that are long enough and I think this will be a really nice fit for pajama pants maybe without the drawstring and without the cargo pockets. So I made these in a linen twill from Blackbird Fabrics and they actually recommended that fabric for me for this pattern and I'm really happy with the wear. I have not worn this to work yet because it feels a little bit too casual but I think I could if I wanted to. So. Uh, first pair of pants, love them, have gotten tons of wear. So these are the Pratia pants by Paradise Patterns. There are a few aspects of these pants that I really like and that I'm really proud of. And then they're, the sizing is a little bit off, which I think is fully my error. But this is my first time doing something that doesn't have an elasticated waistband. Um, this has belt loops, it has nice side pockets. It has a, uh, a pleat that goes all the way down. Uh, I do think at some point I want to learn how to add back pockets, I guess welt pockets, to a pant like this because I just think it looks a little bit nicer on your butt. But loved how this turned out for the most part. I had an issue with the sizing on the waistband where I actually had to extend my waistband piece. I'll see if I can show you. Oh, and this was my first time in installing a zipper. So all of that went really well. The pattern instructions were great. Um, so I had to extend the waistband right there. And then the waist of the pants ended up being too big. So I think at some point I just got my sizing off. I think I might've cut the, uh, the waistband interfacing out to the wrong size. And then I had to lengthen the waistband to match the interfacing and then it ended up being too big. The other thing that might have happened is that my darts just got really stretched out. Or not my darts, but that the waistband of the pant got stretched out even though I did stay stitch it. And I think if I had maybe been more confident in the sizing and then deepened the darts, I think that would have helped as well. I'm always worried that I'm going to make clothing that is too small, but in this instance it's just a little bit too big. Uh, I will belt this and wear it and I have done so a couple of times, but I think the fit would be more comfortable if I um, took out the waistband, made the darts deeper and reinstalled the waistband. I am not that confident in my sewing yet that I am super comfortable with doing that, but I should do it so that I can get more wear out of these and I did like the pattern enough that I will make another pair of these. and. I will pay more attention to the waistband sizing on that pair. I The other issue I ran into on these is I could not get my sewing machine to install a buttonhole. Uh, I guess on this piece, it, it's the fabric was just too thick and I think that my machine has an exceptionally low profile buttonhole situation. 
So I ended up just doing two hook and eye clasps. I do think I need to swap these out for a wider hook and eye clasp so that it's a little bit more sturdy. Uh, so that I will at a bare minimum do. I can, with the size that these are right now, I can wear them as slightly more low rise, but I think I need to wear shoes with a chunkier sole so that they aren't too long. But a lot of firsts with this pattern. I am definitely more confident making pants now. And I think it's a really cool pattern with really good instructions. And yeah, I don't think I really have anything else to say about it, but these are the Pertia Pants by Paradise Patterns. And then my last two items that I made in 2023 are two sweaters that I knit. I definitely rushed these a little bit because I wanted to be able to wear them on our trip. So the knitting process was quite... Um, quite rushed not you know I didn't make any mistakes or anything I just it was more a matter that like the first two weeks of my December like every waking moment that I wasn't working was spent <laughs> knitting these sweaters however I loved taking these on our trip and I between the three sweaters that I took with me I think I wore one almost every day and this week it was a four day week at work but I did wear a hand knit shirt or sweater to work every day this week which was really exciting so the first pattern that i made or finished was the porcelain sweater by lay knit i think i have now talked about this one in two to three videos as well so not a lot to say about it but i really love how this turned out uh, I think especially for this only being my second color work and my second kind of adult sweater. I'm really proud of it. I'm proud of the fit. I'm proud of the color work. Uh, I do think the pattern instructions are fine until you get to the sleeves and then it kind of seems like they just weren't really proofread. So I'm a little hesitant to try more patterns from this designer, but a lot of her designs are really beautiful. So we'll see. Um, so I'm really happy with the fit on this. At first I was tempted to make it a little bit longer, but I am starting to try and get away from wearing all of my clothing like way too long and way too oversized. And yeah, so I actually really like the length. Um, yeah, that's really all there is to say. This is made with Sandus, Sandus Garn, Tin Pure Gint, and Tin Silk Mohair. And I use the recommended colorway for the blue, and then the main color is uh, the color Marzipan from Santa Scarn. So that is my porcelain sweater. I, I'm so proud of this. I love wearing this, and I think it will hopefully last for many years to come. And then the last piece that I finished in 2023 is this Ingrid sweater. This is made in pure gint in the color Spiced Apple. Uh, this pattern has double ribbing and then some kind of faux cross cables, um, nice, you know, wide ribbing on the sleeves, and some double moss stitch in some of the sections as well. I, a lot of people modify this pattern to do a double folded collar instead of this sort of, I don't know, mock turtleneck, but I actually really like the neck on this pattern. I like how it looks. I am not sensitive to wool at all, so it is not itchy unless I'm just wearing it on a day where it's truly too warm to wear a hand knit sweater. Um, but love how this turned out. I like the color. I like the pattern. I think I will be tempted to make another one of these this year, but I just have such a long list of sweaters that I want to knit and I work full time and, you know, life happens. So I think I probably just I'm not gonna have time to make another one, but uh, I really liked this pattern. The instructions were really easy to follow. Uh, kind of the same thing as with my porcelain sweater. I am really proud that this is one of the first, you know, adult garments that I made. And I am excited to see kind of what I'm gonna be able to knit in 2024. I do think I'm gonna try and take on a couple more challenging knitting projects. On the sewing front, I really am more interested in just sewing clothing that I can wear. Um, the sewing practice for me is a lot more functional 
and the knitting is more about the process and I think I can take a little bit more time and hopefully hopefully get into some more complicated techniques. Uh, I guess something else to share about this coming year is I do think I'm going to try and very loosely follow the rule of five. So the idea is that you only purchase five articles of clothing over the course of the year uh, as a sustainability initiative. And this does not include undergarments. Um, it does include thrifted items, which I was surprised by. So I'm not really going to follow the spirit of the initiative because I'm not going to include anything that I knit or sew in those five items. Uh, so, you know, the whole point of the, I think, challenge is about consumption and fabric waste and fast fashion. Uh, so I think in some regards, uh, a lot of the fabric that I buy is, you know, kind of eco-certified and a lot of it comes from Blackbird Fabrics and Core Fabrics and I know they s source their fabric pretty sustainably, but there's still something to be said for kind of the pressure of producing a lot of items and making more than what you actually wear. However, I think I'm comfortable with my level of consumption for what I'm knitting and sewing. Uh, especially, you know, out of everything that I've shown here, there is one piece that I have not worn f very, very frequently. Uh, and that is truly just because I need to fix the straps and then I think I'll get a lot of wear out of it. So yeah, I'm going to try and follow that, uh, the rule of five in 2024. And so hopefully only purchase five, you know, kind of ready to wear garments, shoes, purses, etc. over the course of the year. Uh, so that's everything that I made in 2023. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have made it this far, I would love to hear what your favorite project from 2023 was. So if you want to leave a comment below, I really look forward to reading through those. Uh, that's all I've got. I hope everyone's new year is off to a great start and I will hopefully see you again in a few weeks. Bye everyone.